One of the biggest challenges that my generation faces, and perhaps one of the most critical problems in human history, is global climate change. By now you've probably all heard about the potentially devastating effects of climate change and what environmental implications it could bring. You may be familiar with terms like carbon footprint, which is defined as the total amount of greenhouse gases an individual produces, typically expressed in tons of CO2. Unfortunately, there is still an ongoing debate about the legitimacy of climate change, even though most scientists agree that it's human cause. The bottom line is that we're releasing gases like carbon dioxide and methane into the atmosphere in proportions never before seen in history, up to billions of tons a year. Recently, however, more and more people are becoming aware of their carbon footprint and are taking daily actions to reduce their emissions. More businesses are switching to wind and solar power, but ultimately, we need a change from the masses, and that's where you guys come in. Here are five easy ways to reduce your carbon footprint. Number one, vampire draw. Vampire draw refers to the power consumed by electronic appliances when they are switched off or in a standby mode. Many electronics, especially TVs, may appear off, but are actually still drawing electricity for clocks, timers, remotes, or are just in standby mode. In fact, about 10% of your energy bill each month is due to vampire draw. Energy that goes to charging our cell phones is wasted due to either phones being left in or chargers plugged in but not connected to a phone. The fix is simple. Simply remove any electronics that are still plugged into the wall when they're not in use. More practically, you can buy a power strip, plug all of your electronics into it, and simply switch it off when they're not in use. When possible, purchase Energy Star appliances. They are certified to significantly reduce the amount of energy they use. Number two, think reusable. So every morning, like millions of other people, you head to your favorite coffee shop to grab a quick caffeine boost before work. Your latte macchiato comes in a nice styrofoam cup with a plastic lid. You guzzle down your drink in about 10 minutes, get a nice energy boost, and dispose of your trash. But little do you know that your styrofoam cup and plastic lid will sit in a landfill, or perhaps even in our oceans, for the next thousand years. In fact, styrofoam and plastics never truly break down in the environment. They only break up into smaller and smaller pieces due to weathering and other outside factors until they are small enough to mix homogeneously with the soil. As you can imagine, these styrofoams and plastics, wherever they may end up, cause a lot of damage on the microscopic and macroscopic scales, as we've seen with sea turtles or fish. Likewise, plastic and paper bags are just as detrimental to the environment. 500 billion to 1 trillion plastic bags are used in the United States every year, an average of about 2 million per minute. That's 12 million barrels of oil just for plastic bags every year. So what's the solution to all of this? Purchase a couple reusable bags, or if your order's small enough, just ask the cashier for no bag. Purchase reusable mugs or cups that can be used for years at a time before disposing. More and more food markets are actually stepping up and charging for plastic or paper bags with your order. Even more incentive for you to think reusable. Number three, setting up a compost pile. A compost pile is a heap of vegetation and other kitchen waste that decomposes to become compost. If 1 million people composted for just one year, 82,000 pounds of food would be turned into nutrient-rich fertilizer instead of wasting away in a landfill. If you have a garden at home or grow any sort of plant, your compost pile will provide you with free soil that is very nutrient-rich and will reduce your household waste. Simply compost all non-animal food scraps from your kitchen, like vegetables, coffee grounds, fruits, eggshells, and tea leaves, and add them to a small pile outside. Add some grass clippings, paper scraps, or leaves, which will all provide the pile with carbon. Different species of bacteria work in conjunction with worms to reduce your waste into a nice, rich soil. Avoid adding animal products like meat and cheese so that you don't attract the bad bacteria and your pile won't smell at all. Number four, create your own backyard garden. Now that you have some nice fresh compost, what better place to use it than in your own backyard garden? In fact, growing your own tomato will save about 1.5 thousand miles off its journey to your dinner plate. It will definitely save you money and will probably taste a lot better too. By growing your own garden, you'll get an idea of sustainability, you'll understand how to take care of your own food, grow your own food, which all go a long way in reducing our carbon footprint and making us healthier as people. Additionally, if you have the space, why not plant a couple trees? On average, one tree provides enough oxygen for two people for their entire life. 
If you don't have enough room to start your own garden, look into buying local. If you buy from a local farmer's market, you're not only saving huge amounts of CO2 in terms of food miles, but you're also supporting your local farmers instead of multinational companies. Not to mention the various pesticides, herbicides, and antibiotics in our food that we don't even know about. To put a cherry on top, there is no plastic or paper packaging at local farmer's markets, so you're doing the environment another good deed. And number five, eat your veggies. Reducing or even eliminating your meat intake is the single most effective thing you can do to reduce your carbon footprint. Producing one pound of meat is eight times more energy expensive than producing one pound of veggie protein like tofu. In fact, beef eaters use 160 times more land resources than vegetarians do. Animal agriculture is actually one of the leading causes of deforestation and the animals that are raised for food actually excrete 130 times the amount of waste than the entire human population. All of that waste is drowning out into oceans, into waterways, contaminating, polluting, and destroying life all over the planet. About a quarter of Earth's freshwater resources are used to grow grain for these animals to eat. In fact, 70% of the total grain we produce go to feeding these livestock. The livestock in America alone excrete over 86,000 pounds of poop every second. That's nasty. 26% of the total land in the United States is used to raise livestock, while just 0.45% is used to grow vegetables and fruits. We consume over a trillion animals a year, and with modern population projections, it's simply unsustainable. By switching to a vegetarian diet, you can cut your carbon footprint in half, and if you become vegan, you're gonna cut it even more. So do your part and reduce your meat intake. That's it for this time, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I actually got these tips from this book right here, David DeRothschild's Global Warming Survival Guide. If you guys wanna check this out, definitely do so. It's a great book, 77 tips on reducing your carbon footprint or living in a world with global warming. It's definitely relevant and I would recommend you guys check it out and maybe adopt some of these habits. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something.